All right. I'm going to call this um, meeting to order. Uh, let's have a moment of silence, please. And the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Roll call, please. Mr. Calaguire. I'm here. Mr. Army, you Mr. Brent. Here. Mr. Doby. Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Please. Uh, Mr. Phil Jenkins. Here. Ms. Carmen Ugian. Here. Mr. Litwack. Mr. Litwack. Here. Here. Gotcha. Mr. McLaughlin. Yeah, I'm here. Here. Um, Ms. Tersich Keeley. Here. We have a quorum. Wonderful. Thank you. May we please have the reading of statement of adequate notice. Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. By advertising the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on July 7, 2021. By sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on July 7, 2021. Posting notice on school bulletin boards and main entrances on July 7, 2021. Posting the notice electronically on the district website on July 7, 2021. And by following written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on July 7, 2021. Okay, thank you. I request a motion for the approval of the updated minutes of June 23rd, 2021, regular meeting and executive session, please. So moved. Second. Okay, that was Bob with the motion and Phil with the second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? I abstain. This is Vince. Thank you. Motion carries. I'm requesting a motion to accept the reports of secretary and treasurer for the June 2021, which are in agreement. So moved. Thank you, Bob. Second. Thank you, Cameron. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Darmo abstains. Thank you. Motion carries. Community liaison report. There is none. Um, I welcome everybody to our meeting this evening. We hope to make this quick, seamless, and painless. And as we move forward, we're going to move to public comment on agenda items only, please. Okay. I don't see anyone with their hands up. So now close the public comment aspect. Superintendent's report, Mr. Mersinger. All right, thank you, Mrs. Cameron Ugian. Superintendent's report, a motion is requested to approve the following. Superintendent's report, exhibit D, motion is requested. So moved. Second. Thank you, um, Bob to, uh, had the motion and Phil second that. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, thank you. Thank you. Instruction and program committee report. I make the motion to approve the following line items. Establishment of the K-2 self-contained multiple disabilities class at M. Joan Pearson Elementary School for 2021-2022 and all other applicable school years. B, submission to the New Jersey DOE required request to establish a special education program to the Burlington County Office of Education. I need a second. Second. Thank you, Phil. Questions or comments, please? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, thank you. Finance Committee report, Mr. Litwack. 
Yeah, so I'm once again with low bandwidth. So if I remember, it's A to C. Am I correct? You are correct. And okay, because it's now, now saying my connection's unstable. So anyway, I'd like to move that we accept A to C mm -hmm. as appears on the agenda. Thank you. May we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Cameron. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I believe this is roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my mistake. Roll yep. call vote. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> You're welcome. Sorry, I was muted. That's okay. Mr. Calaguire? I vote no. Do you vote no? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Yes. No. I mean, no, no is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Darmo? Maybe. Abs abstain letters A and B. Yes for letter C. Mr. Dovey? Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Karamanujian? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Tersich Keeley? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Operations and Facilities Committee report, Mr. Calaguire. There's nothing to report at this time. Thank you. Policy Thank you. Committee report, report, Ms. Darmo. Report at this time. Thank you. Personnel Committee report, Mr. C. Jenkins. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion to approve the following of A through G with special recognition to D, resignation of Casey Noble, Walnut Street Middle School principal, effective July 30th, 21. The resignation of Angela Caracella, part-time school counselor, effective July 30, 21. The hiring of John Karakashian as the principal of M. Joan Pearson Elementary School at an annual salary of $106,000 to be prorated for a start date of July 26, 21 for the 2021-2022 school year. And G, the hiring of Barry Sade as the principal of Walnut Street Middle School at an annual salary of $115,000 to be prorated for a start date of July 26, 21 for the annual 21-22 school year. I will make the motion. Thank I you, will Mary. second. Thank you, Phil. This also is a roll call vote, please. Is, I'm sorry, who was second? Any discussion? Phil was second. Or... Thank you. Yes, that was Phil for the second, and now we're requesting a roll call vote, please. Questions or comments, Marissa? Oh, my bad. Yes. Questions or comments, that's my fault. So sorry. Question or comment. Uh, yeah. Ms. Ms. Darmo, Ms. Darmo has a comment on the hiring of the Walnut Street Middle School principal. Because the original contract for Walnut uh, principal also included the duty of superintendent, that was the contract, the last contract that was reviewed by the executive county superintendent. Um, alterations in that which separated out the two positions were never reviewed by the executive county superintendent. I've been directed by the New Jersey School Ethics Commission to see, seek assistance from the executive county superintendent. And if I so choose to um, ask for assistance from the Office of Controversies and Disputes about this issue. So I'll be voting no on G and yes on the other items. Okay. Just the um, one. I'd Mr. like to make Indian, if I could comment. Oh, yes, please. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to indicate, though, that Ms. Darmo is incorrect, uh, that there, there does not exist a contract that, that states uh, anything about the superintendent and Walnut Street Middle School principal. Um, it, I also would like to state that I've already spoken with the county about this topic. The county confirmed uh, what I have shared with the board previously about this. Uh, but we will receive some kind of official notification based on 
what Ms. Darmo is indicating uh, about the questions that she had. But, but I do want to emphasize that um, there is no existing contract that indicates that the Walnut Street Middle School principal uh, is, is part of this superintendent contract. In fact, the CSA contract uh, is specifically um, for superintendent slash principal, but it does not indicate Walnut. It's important to emphasize that. Uh, another thing that I wanted to state though, is that um, these two gentlemen uh, that we have here at the meeting tonight, as you can see, we have John Caracation and Barry Sade. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to welcome them to the district. Uh, welcome back for John who grew up in Delanco and welcome to Delanco uh, also for Barry. So uh, th these two gentlemen uh, through the interview process, I just wanna make the board and the public aware. Uh, we had 77 resumes. Uh, those resumes yes. were funneled down into 20 candidates that received uh, interviews uh, with a committee of 12 individuals that included parents and staff. And then of those 20, uh, we funneled it down further to a top six where we had another round of interviews that included a parent rep, a staff rep, and two board members and myself. And uh, these two gentlemen kept rising to the top. So it was uh, ultimately uh, all the candidates did a fantastic job, but these two, uh, as I said, rose to the top, uh, absolute best candidates for the job for Pearson and Walnut respectively. So I, I have 100% um, confidence that they'll do a fantastic job. So. John and Barry, welcome to Delanco. I'd like to say something, Marissa. Yes, please. All right, John and Barry, welcome to our school board meetings. I'm sure you'll find them very interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's just, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, honestly, I, I, I'm sure I can speak for John as well. Um, we're just, just excited to get started. And, and, and I, I want to thank the, the board and, and say hi to Barry officially <laughs> um, and everybody else. I, I can't tell you how excited I am to be coming home to uh, the school I, I attended as an elementary school student and um, Joan Pearson was actually my principal. So um, this is just a full circle. Uh, it's a dream come true for me. So uh, I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to come home and to uh, to, to lead in this wonderful district and give back to the district that gave me so much. Thank you. I'd like to express my, uh, I guess, optimism of how the process was carried out. Um, I just think that Marissa and Joe and Cameron need to be commended for the efforts they put in. I think Cameron's been between here and Riverside, really learning a lot about personnel and hiring and seeing a lot of candidates come through. So I was glad because I think Phil, Marissa and I can, knowing where we started seven, eight years ago to now to get to this point has been exceptional. It's been, you know, that this is like, okay, deep breath. And now we go back out dealing with we have to deal with post COVID. So I think everyone has done, a, you know, an excellent job. I know neither of these gentlemen, but from how they appear on paper, I don't, I don't know how we even found them. I didn't know these kind of people existed that would fit what we need here now in Delanco. And I'm glad that um, we were able to find them, welcome aboard, and we have to move forward with hope and with a new vision. and let's get things done that we have to get done. So I think we're just gonna have to work harder and the board's gonna have to work harder to support the efforts of the principals, the superintendent, uh, our new BA. I mean, I look at it, okay, it's a fresh opportunity to move forward and continue to move forward. So thank everyone and welcome aboard Barry and John, and uh, let's all be the best we can do in staying in our adults and communicating clearly and being effective. So thank you. Thank you all the folks that were involved with the process. 
parents, staff, teachers. This is a community selecting. It wasn't Mr. Mersinger. Mr. Mersinger could have just selected someone. He didn't. He put it out. He he made it as public as he could. So thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Ms. May I say something? Yes. Yes, please. Um, I, I I looked at both the resumes of these gentlemen. He finally qualified, but my my vote will be no tonight. And the, and the reason that is is I, I I have trouble. I thought about this a long time. Being a parent who has kids in the school, about the process we went through this, I, I don't. I have I have some doubts on that. But more importantly, where I have my main problem is that we have a school with no activities and no sports. And we're, we're hiring more people, we're, raise, we're making raises, doing all these things, but, but yet my, my children, the children here in the school are not are missing out on basic things that you could get out, as I said before, in inner cities, because I deal with them all the time in my other job. So it's, it's disappointing that we come to this point and, and we have, we're gonna have two executive positions. I, I'm, like I said, just based on that point that we're cutting out all these things at the school, I, I, I can't move forward on this. And I think a lot of people in town feel the same way. That's all I wanted to say, thank you. Thank you, Vince. I'd just like to uh, welcome uh, John Barry uh, to Delanco and uh, looking forward to uh, their uh, optimism and uh, energy to be able to uh, work on the things that absolutely need work. And that's our educating our children and getting their test scores uh, back where we need them to be. So welcome aboard and best of luck to you. Thank you. Okay. All right. If no further comments or questions, we will move this to the roll call vote. Mr. Calguire? I vote no. Ms. Darmo? Um, I was going to vote yes on item F for the Pearson School principal, but since Mr. Mersinger clarified that the superintendent slash principal contract did not specify the principal being for Walnut Street. I'll have to change my vote and A through E, yes, F and G, no. Uh, yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Kara Mnugin? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Um, I'll vote no on G and uh, yes on the rest. On uh, Ms. Teresich Keeley? I'll vote yes. Passes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. We look forward to working with you. Welcome. Okay, moving forward. There are no board liaison reports, and I will move this forward to old business discussion uh, of the committee of the whole. Didn't we discuss this at last meeting? Um, so now we're going more in depth. Have a discussion, Mr. Jenkins. Going deeper. Okay. <laughs> there there's something I, I would like to share, if I may, and this is for all the board members. I just became aware, and I think it's other uh, districts may have had the same situation. But you know, the trainings that you do, you, you can like any a first year board member, if they wanted to do all the trainings in one year, they can to become better educated. And it was pointed out that. You know, the, the fourth one is a, the, the fiscal financial, that at least that's what I heard at the last uh, board, you know, county state board meeting was that, you, you, in other words, it, you didn't just have to take the one each year. You can advance yourself. It's an educational training system, the school boards association, the way it's set up. So there's nothing from stopping you other than yourself from getting further training as how the school board association works and what is what we can and can't do under those guidelines and that aegis of their, you know, their, how we're chartered. We're, 
from the school boards association. So I think that maybe for some of the newer board members who haven't gone through all the trainings yet, you can jump ahead if that financial is, you know, what you want to do. And every year, the uh, legal is updated for for anyone as well. You're free to take that. So that may help in the education of our school board. Thanks, Harry. And, um, Thank you, Harry. Okay. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, you're welcome. So we last at our last meeting, we requested that uh, Mr. Marshall reach out to other districts to gain their feedback on the Committee of the Whole directive to see how or if they too were following a similar layout and format and if so how were they handling the situation so i'll allow mr mersinger to speak on that research that he's done thus far all right thank you mrs cameron again so what, what i did was i reached out to about i would say about 150 colleagues i would have to count all the names on the distribution list but many many colleagues to find out how they operate as a board and, and, if, and specifically if it's a committee of the whole because we we have done smaller committees and we've seen that in action so i received responses from a few people uh talking about how they move forward with committee of the whole so what i'd like to do is just share the responses i received so the board is aware of the different formats that are that are given now i didn't receive many responses i could be receiving more uh, over time, but committee of a whole is actually a, a fairly rare format for boards to take on. Um, so it's it's just something that uh, I, I wouldn't expect to hear back from every district. So I heard back from one district where it says, uh, where the superintendent said, we have a committee of a whole. Uh, I, here's how it works. I meet with the board president in advance of the meeting, uh, usually just for an hour or two. Re we review the agenda, discuss items, and highlight items of concern. Then the board gets the agenda uh, the Thursday prior to the meeting, and then the BA and Board of Education um, will, or sorry, sorry, the BA and Board of Education president will answer any questions related to items. So it's 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 that is a very sim simple way to set it up is okay we'll have a committee of the whole marissa and i will discuss things Stephen will be involved as well but I, I don't think that that's what our board is looking for our board is looking for a lot more involvement from the whole board not just the superintendent president and ba so that, that idea although it might work somewhere just doesn't sound like it will work as much in delanco so uh one person uh just very candidly said uh, that that committee of the whole does make the process longer. Uh, they said that they established uh, a new policy that would provide structure to the committee. Uh, and then it said that the attorney would would review that policy as well. It says we discussed every topic in public except for those which were confidential. Uh, the full board discussed every topic. And then uh, this person said though that the board eventually decided to go back to the smaller committees after running a committee of the whole for a while. So that's one where it sounds more like what we're looking for, where we want to have some guidelines within a policy, have it reviewed by our solicitor, and then move forward with a committee of the whole where the full board is involved in discussion of topics uh, and anything that's confidential is done in executive. So um, that's, that's, that sounds very similar to what we're looking for. We had another one respond and say, uh, again, uh, make sure that you put details in your policy. Uh, you would have work session meetings in which you review the agenda. Uh, you would also have an executive session for confidential items. Uh, we also have board members ask many questions during that first work session, but then during the next session for the regular meeting, uh, it is fewer questions. So again, that sounds similar to what we're looking at is we want to have a clear policy with with guidelines committee of the whole that discusses every topic executive session for confidential but then the next week we would have an agenda that typically is not going to require a lot of discussion because all of that discussion happened the week before uh, let's see and then got another one here it says that um we operate as a committee of the whole we have agenda items for discussion submitted prior to the meeting. Uh, it says 
We also have separate committee meetings uh, for human resources as well as operations. So they're, they're actually running more of a hybrid where they have a committee of the whole and then smaller committees for other things. Uh, but no matter what, I mean, that's those are the only responses I've received so far. And I also received other responses from many colleagues who simply just said, we do not operate as a committee of a whole. Sorry, I can't help. Um, but no matter what, I feel like the, the overarching theme is, you know, what do, what do we want to include in that policy as part of what the procedure is for committee of the whole and uh, have that work session where discussions happen, have the regular session where voting is taking place. Uh, that sounds like the, the basic thing that we want to do. It's, it's, it's just a question of what do those policies look like? So now that I've heard back from some people, I want to be able to ask them, could you share that policy with me so we can see the details of your policy? And I also wanted to put, Amy, I don't want to put you on the spot, but Amy, do, no, you, have any, do, you, do you have any morsels of enlightenment that you can share with us when it comes to this topic? Um, it, it has been my experience just with the clients I work with and just, it, I don't know if the board is aware, I was actually a school board member myself for a number of years, um, that the two meeting a month process, what you're looking at, um, it, is, it, it worked. It's, it was the type of meeting when that I participated in as a board member, not as a solicitor. We had um, a work session the week prior to a voting session. Um, but we also operated in individual committees and we let individual committees do the bulk of the work. You get more done with individual committees reporting out at work sessions. Um, I think that's just logistically better, but uh, that's clearly not the path they're going down. Most of my clients do do individual committee. Um, the, I have heard of a few boards that do committee of a whole um, where every matter is brought up and discussed in a work session before a voting session, um, it is possible. It just makes your meetings a lot longer. But if you're willing to put in the time, it can be an effective way to make sure all board members are on the same page. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I think that, uh, go ahead, Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, sure. Um, and I'll start, I also thank you, Joe, for your good efforts on this and doing all that research. I really appreciate that, uh, reaching out to your network. Uh, so what, what you described from the, we heard back from a few of your colleagues. Uh, Joe sounds about right to me. So I think that having two meetings per month, doing a work session, and then um, and then a more uh, streamlined meeting would be ideal. Um, and then having everything. I think um, the one. I think really, I'm not sure what committees we might want to spin off. Um, maybe negotiating, just because that wouldn't be public anyway, because it's all personnel. But other than that, I don't see why any you know. For instance, operations, it's not that big of a project. So I don't see why we might as well just add that to the committee as a whole as well. So so I'm in favor of switching to a full committee as a whole. Thank you. Thank I, you. I think we have to understand that, that we are free to create what works for us. So I, I kind of envision it as going to committee of the whole and then forming the policy and figuring out how we can best work where efforts need to be to then move back, you know, the commit, however we decide it's nothing, there's nothing set in stone. We create what works best. And what is Amy's last name? I know last I, cause this says Amy, I don't know. Yes, what I'm Amy's sorry. Last it's name? Uh, my name is Amy Guerin. I'm an attorney Garin? in Parker McCann. Yes, Guerin. You no, know, I, I, I knew that, yeah. but I G U E R I N. Correct. Okay. No, because you're saying Amy, and I, you know, I knew that you were from Parker McKay, but it just once again this week it just has Amy up there. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I would like to make a comment on the committee of the whole. I still support it. Um, although I did hear, I think Mr. Mersinger said that there would not be a lot of discussion at public meetings because a lot of the discussion already happened at work meetings. If the work meetings are, are open to the public, I think that's, that's not a problem. But if the work meetings are close to the public, then the public won't get to hear our um, reasons for why we do things, which is why discussion in a public forum is good. 
for example, um, Delanco stopped giving free meals. We are not distributing free meals anymore, um, unlike some other school districts. And the public isn't really aware of the reasons for that. So that's something where if we do things as a committee of the whole, sometimes I believe we do need to engage with the community, not just the parents of the community and tell them the reasons for important decisions. That's my comment. Just as a point of clarification, when your work sessions would be public meetings, anytime this board gathers and you have a quorum of members, you must be in a public meeting that is properly advertised. You are not permitted to gather a quorum of members um, for any reason and not advertise it. So yes, your work oh, sessions would be public. Thank you. Um, yeah, your work sessions would be public. That being said, um, the only thing you would really be discussing in your work sessions are the things on the agenda that you develop. So the agenda, which is usually developed um, with your superintendent and your board president, just is not here. In, I mean, not just here in Delanco, but as a matter of course for board members, um, for boards of education everywhere. Um, the agenda is developed between your board president and your superintendent. And if individual board members want a particular topic or issue, they channel that their board president for inclusion on an agenda. So work sessions are not, you know, freewheeling kind of discussion of anything having to do with education. It's an organized purposeful meeting with, um, with a fully developed agenda. Thank you. So um, with that being said, if this is the direction we want to go and we should probably set a schedule for how we'd like to enact this. Um, we had mentioned and Amy had mentioned that uh, a meeting normally is back to back um, two times a month. We have a work session and a voting session. I think um, Stephen had mentioned maybe in conversation or email, I'm not even sure that he too agreed with that format or, or was comfortable with that format as well. And um, we, I was wondering if the board was interested in the second and third Wednesday of every month or the third and fourth Wednesday of every month. but. Let's make that decision now, and then we can um, get the dates set so that we can put that um, in our calendar and that they can be advertised properly. Uh, I'll say that sometimes the second Wednesday is a history board meeting, although let me double check those dates. Uh, and I'm on the Black of History Board, so that would be a conflict. So maybe third, in that case, maybe third and fourth week. But, but uh, what do other people think? I'm fine with the third and fourth. How, where does everyone else stand? I have a conflict uh, with the shade tree, which meets fourth Wednesday. Can't hear you, Bob. Oh, I said I have a problem. I'm on the shade tree uh, commission. They meet on the fourth Wednesday. Um, we could also change the day. Is that correct, Amy? We could have it on a Thursday. You could have it whatever day you'd like. Okay. We could modify that to meet everybody's schedule as well. So maybe we would have it on the third and fourth Thursday or the third Thursday and the fourth Wednesday. However, the committee felt it worked best for the majority. What are our thoughts? We normally, we normally have the second Wednesday for a regular voting meeting, correct? Is correct. that correct? That's correct. You know what I was and say? so why don't we just keep that? Couldn't we make that the the work session and then the voting session, because if we do the work session, the voting session shouldn't, and the public will hear what goes into the work and then the voting can be, you know, the, the, the voting session, because they both have to be advertised. So it just makes, to me, it just makes sense to keep the second Wednesday, which I know I've already, you know, I have it on my calendar and we've been doing that for years, it used to be the first, we moved from the first to the second Wednesday. So I, to me, the I can accommodate whatever day that the majority that's in, but I, I think it would be helpful to keep that second Wednesday, either for the voting or the work session, and then pick up, you know, whatever day of the week, whatever week of the month people want is, is what I would suggest. So rather than moving to the third and fourth, it'll, we know it'll be the second Wednesday and something else. I'm, I'm in favor. I'm, I'm finished. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. The, the history board is the first Wednesday. I got confused. So yeah, the oh. second and third Wednesday or other day for the second meeting. Um, second and third Wednesday okay. is I'm good with. I feel like second and third would work fine. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. I just keep it parallel and it makes it easy for everyone. Second and third. Okay, Catherine, how do you feel? Yeah, those I'm very flexible. Awesome. Vince? You know, my schedule varies. Um, I'll, I'll be able to make most of them, I think. Awesome. But, uh, Thanks. Vera? Um, I'm flexible. If I really have to cancel for one, I can cancel, but it should be all right. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, we'll decide on the second and third Wednesday of every month. The second Wednesday will be the workshop, and the third Wednesday will be the voting session. Thank you. You can put that on the second Wednesday, August 11th. Sorry, sorry about that. Oh, sorry, Stephen. Oh, I was just saying I'm, I'm, I'm uh, so glad we could figure this out, and I, I look forward to the new format. Absolutely. Me too. When, when will we be starting this, folks? Uh, Next I was just saying we can start as early as August 11th and August 18th. That fine, that's fine with me. Sounds good. Well, I will. Same time to 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, <laughs> 6 o'clock, whatever. Not 6, don't. <laughs> 7. We're keeping it at 7 unless seven. the board objects to that. So I will advertise, I will put together, advertise the papers for the second and third Wednesday throughout the entire rest of the remainder of the year. Um, and um, so I'll do that tomorrow. Thank you. The other item, you mentioned it, I just wanna make sure we're clear on the actual agenda. Um, we, you're right, Marissa, we did something similar in Haddonfield. We didn't do community the whole, but we did a work session before a regular meeting. And you mentioned the agenda. So we could do it a couple of different ways. I just wanna make sure we're all on the same page. We could basically put a little line that says agenda for the third Wednesday of the month, basically, and have that attachment. That way it's a working document that people can see up until that time of that meeting with the attachments developing as we get closer, because obviously we're not gonna have all the attachments the second week, the third week. Um, and then put all the other, like, Old business, new business discussion items that people come up with in as well. That way we keep the agenda very simple. Um, and the reason why I say that's important for me, because as I put it together, if you do back to back weeks, it's hard to put two agendas back to back, uh, you know, especially if we complicate them. So does that work for everyone? A very simple, just straightforward old business, new business, and just an attachment to the agenda for the following week. Does that work? I think that works for me because it can be an evolving document like you're stating that we will discuss and add to and you will make those adjustments for that next meeting but at least we have the template there exactly. okay i just want to make sure we're clear before we because obviously the 11th isn't that far away actually so, <laughs> it's, no. it's right around the corner <laughs> so um so, i mean if i can just type in for what it's worth um the districts that i know that do work sessions and voting sessions and this was my experience as well is that you weren't actually developing two agendas for meeting one and meeting two. In essence, you developed one agenda, the work session, you work through the agenda, there's a lot of discussion, you put in a lot of time, you flesh out the issues, you tinker at the edges, you refine it, and then by the end of that meeting, it's finalized for meeting two. So when you show up at meeting two, it's literally everybody just sits down and, and you cast your votes because all your discussion was already had and your agenda was fleshed out. So it, it, just in my experience, you can streamline it as opposed to trying to develop two separate agendas, which can be cumbersome for your BA. Amy, I appreciate that because now that, now that you said that, we're already doing the second Tuesday of the month anyway. So if we do the same process we've been doing, develop the agenda for the second Tuesday, and then we just simply make the revisions as the board wishes on that Tuesday night for the Wednesday meeting. And that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Does that work? I, again, I'm just trying to be clear with the board what you guys want me to do uh, so I can do this for next meeting. Also, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the work session, we might have long range things that we're working on there as well that aren't going to be voted on. We'll have what 
you know, the work session for the immediate agenda the following week. But there would, I'm, I'm assuming that there would be uh, you know, long-term projects that may, you know, take more than just a week to gather the information. And, you know, it could be, you know, whatever length of time it takes. So I think that's, I think there's the two things, Steve. The one is just the ongoing voting info for the coming up meeting the following week and other would be work that we that may go on as well you know reporting out to the to everyone here i'm working on this here we are with this any input any ideas as and maybe even make that part of how we organize that work session to make it effective and to not cross things up to stay parallel for the vote what we're voting on that is definitely has to take place then but also if there's other you know that would be part b you know long long range things and that that may be the first thing we want to get over before we get into so but that's a board i think we can well, figure that out i think that would we, fall uh, under like new business organize. that'd be like a new business type thing yeah like kind of just new business and old business kind of mm -hmm. old business goes to vote and new business is what we're shaking from the trees to see what information and some people, you know, some people have more time than others to pursue the work efforts that might be needed on specific projects or long term things that we're, you know, that we're working on long term programs or developing things or whatever it could be. That, that's my suggestion. Thank you. Someone else, I think I cut off someone. I don't know who it was. It was Catherine. Okay. Um, so I was just curious. So uh, so the idea would be we keep our second Wednesday meeting. We have a fourth, third Wednesday meeting, which is the one where we actually vote. So we would still be getting the agenda items by the Friday before. Is that right? Yes, that's exactly why I'm bringing this up. So okay. if it looks like to me, that's, that's what I'm trying to make sure we're clear on. So I have the right expectation mm -hmm. for all of you. So if I'm hearing correctly, basically that's exactly what we'll do. The agenda won't change. And then maybe old business, new business is where we would add maybe just random topics for that meeting we want to add. And then if there's any revisions to it, let's pretend we discuss something during the work session in order to take that off that agenda, we revise that for the last for the next meeting. So basically week two versus week three should be identical except for some minor revisions that you bring up that the board brings up at that meeting. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that shouldn't change anything in terms of our yeah. process, in terms of what I'm used to. Correct. You would, you would still provide us with the agenda prior to that exactly. second Wednesday. Yep. We have time to review it and be ready to discuss in our open committee format. We'd make those discussions. We'd make any revisions that are deemed necessary. And then that is what would be um, followed and voted on on that third Wednesday. And as a reminder, that public packet will still go out to the public for that first meeting. So mm -hmm. everything that we have ready will all still go out to the public. Nothing will change with that. Um, so just when I just want to reiterate everything, everything's been given to you the first meeting, unless you make a revision. And then the next meeting will really be the same thing, except minus something here and there. Correct. That sounds like a, a good plan. When we advertise, next question. Okay. And Amy, you may want to chime in here. When we advertise, uh, my previous experience, we didn't take action, but if we want to take action, should we advertise saying that we may take action at all meetings, just in case there was some immediate business that we had to take care of? I think so. And because you'll find as you go along, um, you know, there's always something that comes up. There's always something that needs attention. And it's better just to have yourself covered that you may vote at every meeting, even though your intention is not to vote at the worst. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, so I mean, I think this is a, a great start in how we're going to move this forward. We have a time to start a start date. We have an idea of how it's going to, you know, present itself that evening. And I think that once we get that process started, we'll be able to fine tune all the little things so that we can make it a really productive evening that we discuss a lot of items and then we're able to vote on them quite easily the following Wednesday. So I'm really excited about it. And I'm really thankful that everybody is on board to do this. And I think that it's really going to help open the lines of communication 
and the um, the trust between us all. So I think that's great. And I appreciate everybody um, doing this. So thank you. I appreciate that. If there's nothing for I just hope that we're able. Yeah, I just hope that we're able to just focus on the issues and the problems and not on each other. I think that will help us go a long way. And I think we're tonight demonstrates that we're capable of it. So now we just have to do it. Very true. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I agree. All right, so now we go back and go on to the additional item in old business, the discussion of format for the BOE meetings in person, virtual and hybrid. Again, this was brought up previously, but we are going deeper into this one as well. So let's open this up for discussion, please. I'm in favor of going back to public meetings. Simple as that. Uh, I would much prefer to stay with Zoom, um, partly because it's convenient. You know, I'm a parent, I have a two-year-old, uh, it's convenient to do it from home. We've all gotten used to this format. We can hear each other well. We don't have to troubleshoot new technical issues. Um, and it just seems like uh, preferable to me. So I, I would rather stay remote. My number one preference is Zoom. If, um, if some people on the board think for some reason that's too weird or whatever, we could do a hybrid. And since the teachers, they could handle kids at home, kids in the classroom. The most important thing is people have to take turns talking, amuse themselves. You know, if, if uh, third graders can do it, I think we could do it. So my second choice would be the, the hybrid Zoom where we have the laptops in front of us, and um, but we're in person. But my first choice is with Steve. Thank you, and I appreciate that. And I think that's a great parlay into um, Albert, perhaps speaking on how this will impact the board and what we can expect if we decide to go in that route specifically. So I appreciate that. Albert, did you want to speak? Yes. Um, so going back, you know, in public sessions would cost the district no money. Um, if you guys decide to go the virtual route, um, we will have to, you know, pay for a Zoom license. Um, and if we choose hybrid, that will also cost money as well. And I feel like any solution we, you know, put out there, I feel like it will probably cause more problems than solutions. Uh, but we can do a hybrid, but I just, I feel like it won't be a clean setup. Like, you know, like Steve made a good point last meeting about the audio. And um, if you guys had to pick anything, in my opinion, I would just go between public or all virtual. So that's my opinion. Um, Albert, would we need to pay for Google Meet? Google Meets? Um, That's what we used um, for classes when we had kids at home, kids in school. At the same time, we had children yes, logging on Google from Meets, home. Google Meets is free. The only problem with Google Meets is if you want outside sources to come in, like uh, it gets complicated. But if everyone were like in district, Google Meets would be fine. That's what do you why, mean outside sources? Like, like how we're doing Zoom right now. Any anybody coming in, it, it gets complicated with Google Meets. But I had children okay. logging in from the Dominican Republic on Google Meet into my class, so I don't see why why is that difficult. They just need the um, the the uh, the link. That's all they need. So yeah, why I'm, so why is that difficult? There, there's there's different roles with Google Meets. Um, we can talk about it, you know, behind the scenes if you need, but that's why Google Meets like was not a major thing during the pandemic. You, everyone was using Zoom because Google Meets have certain limitations that Zoom um, does better in, so. Well, that's interesting. Hamilton, you know, through high schools, through middle schools, they were, they decided not to do Zoom because they thought it was less secure. So that's why we did Google Meet for everything. I will okay. say, yeah, I'll just give you my opinion. Uh, we don't need to have a debate on it, um, but it's ultimately what the board decides, so. I think the money, I think the, the Zoom subscription is relatively affordable. I mean, the, the, we have 36 people on here now, including the, the board. So there's a lot of benefit to the community. 
and everyone already knows how to use Zoom. So, so to me, I'm, I'm fine with sticking with Zoom. How, uh, how much is the license and don't we have licenses already? No, we're right now we're using more sounds license and they are ending their zoom subscription um, in August because they're going back in person for their board meetings. So they don't really need to use zoom anymore, especially the school year everyone's back in person. So virtual isn't really, you know, a thing uh, for next school year. And we so would, if I'm not mistaken, we would have to change your, your policy because it's in there about only two two people at a time being am i correct with that two people at a time being able to be virtual because that was that put in a couple years ago before all correct. this took place that is so. correct, I, correct. Can, I can throw this out there just to have put a number on it <clears throat> uh, for up to 100 percent participants a zoom pro account is 149 dollars per year so that's you know 12 some dollars per month which to me seems pretty affordable I think the cost is negligible. Albert and I talked about this. Actually, the, the one thing that that I said to Albert was, you know, come with your experience because he's going to be the one that has to carry this out, right? So, if you were to have to, if he were to have to carry out Zoom meetings, that that's kind of easy, second nature now for him. Same thing for in person; uh, it would be very minimal for Albert. But the hybrid, I think, based on what Albert is saying, presents a challenge because. I do wonder about hybrid. Uh, I think it's a good idea in a certain sense, but then at the same time, I have to wonder, you know, if we're gonna um, be there. So Marissa, you, you were there during that interview where we all had our laptops out and we had to turn the sound down. We had to mute ourselves. And otherwise you're hearing my voice over six computers, you know, and same thing would happen uh, during the board meeting where we have nine elected board members, two administrators, so 11 computers out there. So the sound you know, could present a challenge because nobody's perfect and, and we're gonna have people that forget to mute or forget to turn the sound down, et cetera. But that, I think that's one challenge. But then there's also the question of who's participating from the public? Is it virtual? Is it in person? Is it both? So, I mean, it, it is, I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm saying that if we want a streamlined approach, uh, I don't see hybrid being that. I, I see it being more streamlined if we had one or the other. It, it can, can I offer two cents if that's okay? Um, not, and one of my clients is Pine Hill School District and they've been doing um, hybrid since they started bringing their board members back on the regular at their board meetings. And what we do is they, we have the boardroom set up and everybody sits in their regular seats. Um, but if you wanna participate hybrid uh, it, and there's a single camera that picks up the room and a single micro, well, and microphones that pick up our voices so that there, you don't have the problem of everyone being on their own laptop. Um, and it's projected onto a screen and we can see everyone who's calling in and participating via Zoom. But instead of having individual laptops and dealing with the sound issue, because like Joe, I've had that experience and it's a terrible experience. And it's, a, it's, it's just, it made for awful meetings. Um, the experience at Pine Hill with the single camera focusing on the whole room seems to work well for them. I, I could see that there's a possibility, you know, under the right conditions, I could see that working. I would say that the, the gym at, at uh, Pearson School is uh, it's acoustically compromised. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an echoey room and it's pretty tough to get nine, you know, nine board members plus, you know, so maybe 11 people, you know, all picked up by the same microphone. Um, I think you know, we, we did a few meetings. I mean, the, the school board uh, streamed some meetings over YouTube about a year ago, and it was not very successful. It was very, very hard to hear. Um, so I'm a little skeptical that we can all, if we had a you know, a nicely acoustically treated room, I think that could work with one mic if we were all around a conference table. But the way the meetings have been set up in the past, I'm skeptical of that. How about thank you? For, I'm glad it works out somewhere. Thank you. I'm all for going back in person. Again, I will use the same argument that I used previously. We have a portion of our meeting during the voting session that is regarding student recognition. I think that it's very important that we do that in person. I think the children and the parents um, enjoy it and they gain a lot from it as well. I also think that in person is also acceptable in terms of if we're asking the students and teachers to go back in person, we can do the same. 
And I think that it would be just as seamless to be in person as it would be in any other you know, form, if not more. And again, the benefit of having the children and their recognition in person is a priceless gift. I agree with you, Marissa. I think in person would be the way to go. But I do notice we have significantly more participation from parents and everyone being able to watch. So if we, if the school board itself was back in person and we had the ability for the public to watch, you know, remotely, I think that would be a good compromise on both. But I do think that we as a school board should be sitting there in the meeting. I think so too. And, you know, and I, and I think a little bit, you know, we have the student recognition, which I think is an awesome thing. People did show up to that. Quite a bit of people showed up to that. And then they chose to leave for the meeting, understandably. But there's that option. They can stay. And we always offer that and open that up to the public. So, I mean, the people do come out. You know, I don't think that that's the biggest hindrance is having an in-person uh, session. The parents do come out because they want to support their children um, and do it in a public way. And I think that they would, in turn, now that I think that there's a desire to be more involved, I, I truly hope that they'll, more people will stay. More people will stay for the meetings and be involved. I think that would be an awesome um, and great gift to our community that if, you know, more people come to the meetings and interact and, you know, are involved and can spread the word, I think that's phenomenal. And then we're doing not only a service to our community, but to our students as well by providing them that in-person recognition and for the community to also receive their information firsthand. Um, so I feel like, you know, there's so much positive oh, feedback. Go ahead. Um, I just want to say like the, the frustration that you felt like during the interviews, you said there was a problem with sound and muting. It was very stressful. That's a little taste of what the teachers had to go through, <laughs> except they had a lot of kids doing it too. So um, I still think, you know, if, if the majority, we always have our five, four split. If the majority wants to be in person, let's at least try to get used to what the teachers had to do from the get-go. That's better than, the, uh, you know, let's just try it. If it doesn't work, maybe we'll have to do like what Amy was suggesting and try to improve the sound, but somehow we have to have some virtual element. Yeah, what about- uh, Sorry, Bob. Uh, what session uh, would be uh, via Zoom and the, uh, second one would be in person bob i've been thinking the same thing for about five minutes if we're going to <laughs> do most of the, the major deliberation and the stuff we want the public to see because that was the main thing with all this uh, at the work session then if we have that over zoom that would be advantageous and then we have the in-person meeting where if we need to talk about anything in, in executive which i imagine would still happen at the approval meeting then we can do all that in person so that that seems like a i'd, I'd say a pretty de decent compromise if anything i i think that's actually a great idea because that then that will enable our student recognition to be in person because that would be during our voting session and then the workshop should work should session could then be virtual, which would enable us to all be involved in the community to be present for as well. I, I do think that's a compromise. I don't know how everyone else feels. I think that's a good compromise as long as um, the voting session, even if the um, the sound is a little off, maybe we do what Amy was describing with the, the camera away, from, you know, catching everyone because there's still um, there, there's still an, an advantage to having that as a recorded meeting. But, um, but I, I like the idea that um, Mr. Dovey and Cameron are bringing up. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I agree with Vera. It's, as, long as, the, as long as we can do a stream of the voting session, uh, which you know, should be doable, even if it's not perfect, as long as we can stream that, then I'm okay with that arrangement. Stephen McLaughlin, I nominate you to help us with that. <laughs> uh, that's good. Because... I'd love to run some tests. If we can get in there, that's no. <laughs> I just want to bring up the court, the uh, courtroom in Delanco. They use uh, camera, and they have a uh, setup there that uh, you know covers the courtroom. So, uh, you know that that might be something to look at to see what their setup is. It's probably uh, something the state has uh, has got specs on and so forth, because uh, um, but it seems to work for the courts. Well, the big yeah. difference over there is that they have carpet, so it's acoustically a little less challenging. Uh, also, the the township committee 
this is not something I reported on in my liaison report, but they are spending money or planning to spend money. They've earmarked money to go to a hybrid model at some point in the future. So they're going to be installing um, audio and recording equipment that we could look into. Yeah, they're working on the whole acoustic. They're spending a lot of money on the acoustics of the room too, I believe. They are, yes. I wonder if we could, I wonder if we could borrow their meeting space if that, you know, if and when that uh, gets set up, gets, gets running. I'm, I'm sure they would be agreeable to that. That's an interesting idea. Don't conflict with, you know, with other uh, meetings that they have. Yeah, their meetings are on Mondays, so it shouldn't right. be an well, issue. There are, other, but... there are other groups that use Right, them. other groups, yes, of course. Yeah. And they do court in there. But it's worth looking into. Definitely worth, it, worth exploring. I think that's a good point, too. So, Marissa or Ms. Karamanugi, and I just want to emphasize because Ms. Darmo said that teachers experienced frustration with the, the hybrid model. And I totally understand that. You know, I mean, that was a year and a half worth of virtual, hybrid, in person. I mean, there, there were so many different things going on. And I appreciate what the teachers had, had done over that time. However, it's important to note that the standing mandate right now is that we will be in person for instruction in September uh, for students and staff. So the expectation for staff and students, as you, you said, Mrs. Karamanugian, is to be in person. But I actually really appreciate this idea of balancing the different needs by having the work session be virtual um, and having the regular public session be in person. I think that's a great idea. I do too. And I think if everybody's agreeable to it, I think it's a great direction to go in because it provides a little bit of what both, you know, all sides really would like. And at the same time, it provides the students with that opportunity to gain their recognition in person as well. Is that, does, do the board members feel comfortable with that direction of work session as a virtual platform and the voting session as an in-person platform? Yeah. As long as in-person is streamed. Um, that's not in person. You go in person, but you also have it on video, just yeah, as a record. It's in public. What would be the um, the regulations around wearing a mask at a in person meeting? Right now, we're told that uh, as long as you're vaccinated, that masks are optional. But that that could change in in the next six weeks. I'm not sure, but that's that's what we were just told recently. So we would follow the, the county mask mandate then? Yeah, but it's optional. I mean, I, if I'm in person, I, you know, at my age, I'm going to wear a mask. Um, I just prefer, I've been vaccinated. I, you know, I just would prefer. And if I feel comfortable, I'll take it off. If I don't, I'll keep it on. That's a, that's a bit of a different issue in a way. Mm -hmm. The other thing is if we're going to be doing, like I pointed out before, what we have, um, we'd have to, change our policy mm -hmm. you know that however we need to in order to make that work well how difficult we're going to do how difficult is that going to uh, be is that something we can do immediately we can suspend, i would think so we can suspend the immediate directive that's in the policy from my understanding and then vote on a new one i believe that that we uh, mentioned that at the last meeting so we could yeah, and we did that we did that originally in order to be able to be doing everything virtually. We suspended well, it. I uh, can I make a motion that we suspend the existing policy? Well, we do. Uh, we also have a public law that's still in effect that supersedes those policies that states that we are required to provide certain things virtually, right? So like if we were to have a virtual meeting like this one, uh, it stipulates those requirements. So our policies say nothing about that, but there, there are, there's a public law that exists about that. I think we need to be careful and um, Amy might be able to tell us how to parse this with the language, because if we say we're suspending it, then technically the, the uh, second meeting where we're in person the way it is now, only two people could do it. We suspend that, then anyone who wanted to be virtual could be virtual. That's what I'm saying. The language, the how it it would have to be changed if we 
you know, um, what our intentions and what the law is, is something different or the, what we have on a book. Sure, so the, the law deals with um, public, I mean, this is a public meeting and whether you're a school board or a municipality or any other kind of public entity, there are rules about making, about how you do your business in public, what you do in executive, how um, the public accesses it and the right of the public to comment on certain items before you actually vote. So the law deals with those kinds of things. Now, when it comes to, and it deals with whether or not you can be virtual or not, but but if you've already voted to suspend your pol policy, presumably at the beginning of the pandemic when you first went virtual, yeah. um, yeah. that remains in effect. What I would in suggest effect. is, what I would suggest is if you're planning to move to this new hybrid model and now you have some experience with being online and you know the pros and cons and the things you want to work out, let's revise your policy. Um, and that can be one of your uh, first discussion items um, when you move to committee of the whole. Uh, and I'm happy, I don't know if Joe has already approached this with my colleagues Susan Hodges or not, but I would be happy to work with Joe on developing your policy draft um, that now addresses your new normal. And as far as what it's in our policy now, it's within like part of a sentence that all might, that would have, need to be changed because we limited it instead of, we said only two people at a time, it's just taking that out basically, I would think as far as what's in our policy, well, there's a what you're talking about is beyond. I have, yeah, I haven't actually read your policy, so I can't comment on it specifically, yeah. but um, you know, you, ha you now, you have experience with virtual meetings now. There could be other things based on that experience you want to do to enhance your policy. It's more than a sentence that needs to be changed, I think, because there's a whole request process, approval denying, by, voted by the board. I mean, it's very, it's pretty long, so. Yeah, but if you look at it, it just limits it to only two. But I think that we would want to change this convenient. voting. Part yeah, we, yeah. We, we've just ignored yeah. the policy for a year and a half, so I, I, I think that we'll be okay. Um, we will be okay, and because that policy just hasn't been applicable for a year and a half, so I, I think we'll be fine going through a process of changing what that looks like. Um, yeah. Can I jump in real quick? Uh, I'm hoping to get confirmation on one thing. Uh, are we going to? I, I want to make sure that just to confirm that we're going to stream the voting sessions, that those are, I'm not sure about hybrid, I'm not sure about taking public you know, comments from the public, but at the very least doing a, a live stream, I think would be important just to, just to include the community and, and get things on the record. Steve, I agree with you. And yes. I think what we did before was an okay setup. But the reason I said, maybe we should have you help us is because you had a different type of setup with a different piece of equipment that I think was better than the equipment we had. We, we had no equipment that we purchased to record mm -hmm. video or, or live stream a video. So I feel like the live streaming allows for the public to at least view the proceedings. It doesn't necessarily let them participate, right? But they see what's going on and hear what's going on. But then it's recorded and we put it up on the, the, uh, mm -hmm. the website, Albert's been doing that. So, I mean, I, I would fully support that. I feel like we've been talking about transparency for a while now. There is no reason that, sh that, you know, that there's nothing to prevent us from doing that with the exception of, do we have the equipment to make it happen? Yeah, I'm not, you know, what you had, what you used last time as a baseline is inadequate and uh, I would love to help and maybe we can get some, you know, get something that sounds a little better, but, but, but you know, what you had last time would be adequate if nothing else comes through. But do, what, what do what other board members think? Um, can I get some, can I confirm that we can, that we're going to stream this sure. second meeting, the vote second? I think that we should, absolutely. Okay. Great, thank you. And I see Cameron shaking his head as well. He was in agreement, but now he's provided a thumbs up. <laughs> um, but yes, I think that, yeah, and Bob agree. So I think that that's a, a great idea. Of course, that should be um, streamed and so people can see things in real time and be present as, as we hope that they would virtually. So I think that that's a great idea. 
Okay, so I think that we have a good directive there. I think that um, it was a great compromise and I appreciate the board working together to come to that compromise. And I think because of that, we're going to have really good um, meetings that are productive again. So I'm excited for that. So when, August okay. 11th. And then, so the only thing I just wanted to like, I guess, bring up is uh, if a board member, so on our current policy, you have to like request five days ahead of time, whatever. Um, I know we're not, we haven't been following that, but just, just like what would be the process if a board member did want to go virtual for said meeting and, or can we make it sort of an a, a agreement among our, amongst ourselves that if we're feeling sick, we wouldn't show up to the in-person meeting. Mm -hmm. I think that's a valid point to bring up. Certainly we would not want anyone to come if they were feeling ill, um, considering our current climate. I think that, I mean, and sometimes that, uh, feeling of illness doesn't happen five days prior to a meeting. So I think that that seems it's acceptable to be able to provide that notice once you feel the way that you feel. I don't know how the majority feels. Of course, we would need to have a quorum present um, at our in-person voting session. So that would be something we need to think about. We can't have everybody obviously being sick or we'd have to change it to a virtual aspect, I guess. I don't really know. That's certainly something we do need to um, massage a little bit more to find out how we would handle situations like that. So you're saying that if, uh, so you're saying, so there's nine of us, if five people said that they wanted to do it virtually and four people were meeting in person, that we don't have a quorum? Not considering we're, we're voting on having, or we're deciding to have an in-person voting session. It would still be a quorum if we decide to do it half virtual, half not, but we'd have to make a decision on how it's presented. Because what we're deciding is that our vote, voting session will be in person and not virtual. Right. Okay. So, but is there a way to say that people who are participating virtually or not are participating in the forum? Like, how do, how does that conversation come up? And happen? No, no. They, they, you'd still be a participant under the policy. However, however, uh, executive session would not be open to that person right. on the policy. You know, and that's uh, that's another item that would need to be figured out. But I feel like. You know that those are the things that Marissa is mentioning that I think need to be worked out at some point. But I guess the question is, are we going to work them out when we come to that river and, and have to build the bridge at that point, or are we doing it? Are we doing it now? Yeah. Do, should we talk about it on the eleventh at our first work session, or do we talk I, about it? I, I think that's a great idea. I think that's the perfect opportunity to start talking about the issues. We can put that on. I guess that would be considered old business because we're discussing it and we can talk about it then and dig deeper into how we would handle that. I think in the meantime, we can probably all think about how we envision that to happen and then bring it to the table when we bring that uh, topic up. Okay. Sounds good. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, does anybody else have anything else to um, provide for the old business? If not, I will move this on to new business. And there is nothing in new business that I see on the agenda currently. Um, I have something for to comment on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, my my new business from before had to do with the long range facilities plan. I didn't go over the the past agendas yet to look for the Garrison Architects report, which is in there somewhere. But when I was just reviewing the um, Department of Ed site, I think we have to. If there, I guess if there's a change in the long range facility plan, it has to be done every five years, or I'm not sure if it has to be reviewed every five years, but um, the board needs to be aware of what the current plan is. So I hope at some point we can dig that up and look at it and you know see what's in it, see if we wanna to vote to change anything. And the second thing is no disrespect to Mrs. Uh, Ms. Garen but I think we do need some policy on um, when we need a lawyer present because uh, lawyers are expensive. And being as that we don't have any clubs, we don't have any after school activities for the kids, we have to be penny pinchers. So I just wanted to mention that. I don't think that we have to be penny pinchers. We, we have to be spending our money wisely is my take on it. and you have to spend and and um for me penny you know it's just part of doing business wisely. there's expenses not necessarily if you're pinching when you need to open the purse strings sometimes that's it, it's my interpretation of beyond literal the figurative interpretation of 
that. And I don't want to get in, get us off on tangents, but I think that, you know, sometimes people have to understand that doing business, especially people that haven't been in business, it's not like running your own household. It's a very different, there's different ways that it, that it operates, you know, and um, also I think to be responsible, you know, it depends on what you think penny pitching is. I mean, we, we each have our own level that we think is, oh, we spent too much for this as opposed to that. And some of it, honestly, is that's why we're elected board and we have a, a CSA or superintendent and we have a BABS and those folks are doing that for us. They're doing that, that work and saying, hey, we have to spend here, not there. And it's good to have, have a lawyer at a meeting when we need a lawyer, our lawyer at a meeting and our lawyer to also interject when any board member is um, just presenting information that's not legally applicable as if it were, that that's, I think, important for whoever is doing it because otherwise, you know, we all are, we all can be trial lawyers very easily. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's interpretative. So um, we're okay, I, you know, and there's going to be money coming, you know, this has been, you know, I feel like I've been the messenger for a year and a half. And that's what I telling the people above me, I say, hey, when is the money coming? You, you know, I've been telling people a year and a half. And I think, with the reopening of schools, we're gonna be seeing that money coming in from was the S2 and there's gonna be other monies that are available. And we have to be aggressive in going out and trying to get that money to utilize to better our schools. That's my take on it. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I grew up on a farm, I'm a, I'm a fiscal conservative. You use everything, you reuse it. That's not the issue, it's the issue is spending it wisely and something I had to learn in being an educator because if I applied my penny pinching, you know, I had to learn that you can't run a business doing that. You can't expand, you can't get what you need when you need it if you have a pre-gone conclusion that I can't spend money or it's not wisely spent. And that's my that's my take on it. So Thank I've you. been in a number of educational settings, public, private. So. Thank you. I'm, I'm positively optimistic that as we move forward with the Committee of the Whole and the separate voting session, that we will see things in a, in a, with more fresh, you know, with a fresh, fresh outlook. I think that things will be handled differently, and I'm hopeful that it won't necessarily be mandatory that we have somebody here to kind of keep us in line. So I'm super excited to, to see the future go in that direction. And I am hopeful that it happens sooner than later. So I think we just have to play it by ear and see how things go moving forward. And once we do, we can make those decisions as we see fit. And I think it's great that Amy Guerin has experience as a school board member and also with what we're trying to move to. That's going to be helpful. You know, you, you, what I learned over the years is you need help when you need it. That's when you got to get it. And we need help right now. So um, the old penny wise, pound foolish. So thank you. Better, a lot of good new people entering into what we're doing here in Delanco. So they need to be able to, to help us. That's what their role is to help the board, help the administration, the you know, the superintendent, the board secretary, and then and be supportive of our administration and our teacher. You know, it's a, it's a total community effort. So thank you. Enough from me. <laughs> thank you, Harry. I appreciate that. Thank you. So, so Marissa, I just wanted to say for the sake of the board and for the sake of the public that we certainly do not uh, ask for any kind of legal counsel in a haphazard or arbitrary way. Uh, when we ask for the support of legal counsel, it's for a good reason. And uh, our board policy does authorize me 
Stephen Burns or someone that I designate to work with our legal counsel on different issues and topics, including uh, what, what Harry was just mentioning and what you were just mentioning related to the board transitioning to a different model and, and those sorts of things. So it's um, absolutely important for us to have our solicitor present, at least right now. Like you said, it doesn't mean that it's every meeting for the rest of time. It just, that's, that is the recommendation right now. Correct. Thank you. Okay, if there's nothing else in new business and distributions are all out, as I believe they are, I will open this up for pu public comment on non-agenda items, and I will read the first one that I have received. We received it um, in the virtual um, forum, and this one is from Mr. David Archer, 700 Chestnut Street in Delanco, and he wanted to make the comment that my kids... Uh, let me see. Um, Joe, can you jump to the cell right above that just so I can read it because your, your name is covering. Okay, yeah. thank you. My kids will not be wearing a mask in school. It's very unhealthy for children to wear them all day. And I wanted to know if you all are going to teach critical race theory, because if so, my children will walk out of class as I've told them to do. So I just wanted that put out there. Thank you for your comment. Um, Gregory's iPhone, you have your hand up if you'd like to speak. Hi, yeah, I, I apologize. I was about 10 minutes late. I have a complimentary um, thing I wanted to mention on an agenda item. Is that okay? Yes, please. So I'm from, I live at uh, 14 Time and Circle. So I just wanted to mention on the um, re replacing the principles. Um, I thought it was awesome what, how, the, how Mr. Mersinger handled it. Um, you were able to get you know, the community involved. You were able to get the teachers involved. Um, I was one of the ones that was actually involved in the interviews. Um, so I, I appreciate, you know, being able to, to do that. But, you know, in the expedited time frame that, that the school faced, um, I think we got two fantastic candidates. Um, I think Barry and John are going to do amazing jobs. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, my daughter going through the school, going through, you know, um, elementary and middle school with both of these principals. Um, they have big shoes to fill with Mr. Conte and Ms. Noble, but, you know, I think they're going to do exceptional jobs, sensational jobs, and really looking forward to that. Um, the other comment I wanted to make that's on non-agenda item was I do encourage all the parents on here, you know, if you ever have issues, you know, I see it a lot. And one of the worst ways to, you know, impact the community negatively is when you have a problem with something with the school, come to Mr. Mersinger, like come to him first. If you have a problem, he will get you to the right people, the people that can give you the right information. I think a lot of times we do ourselves a disservice as a community by putting it on Facebook, social media, whatever, and it just starts a war. Um, so I encourage everybody in the future, you have a problem, like go, go to Mr. Mersinger. You know, that's what he's there for. Um, you know, and we've had problems in the past. And instead of putting it on social media, I go to him for something and he gets me to the right person that can get me the right information. Um, so I appreciate it if everybody could do that in the future. And uh, thanks for the time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foley. Uh, Mrs. Kamenugian, if I might make a non-agenda item comment. You may. I'm not a member of the public, but thank you, Mr. Foley. Yeah. I, I did want to take a moment for anyone who's here, if you participated in the principal interview process, whether you're a parent or a staff member, I truly appreciate everything that you did to help with that process. As Mr. Foley said, it was very expedited. You know, the, it, it, if it were uh, happening, let's say in March or April, of course we would, we would take more time. We would visit someone's school. We would do all these things, but that's not what can happen in July. So, you know, we were, we were able to go through an expedited process and find two amazing candidates in John and Barry. And so I, I just wanted to praise and, and thank everyone who was involved in that. So, and, and again, um, Mrs. Cameron, again, I appreciate what Mr. Foley just said there that I had a few parents reach out to me recently about a topic and I'm glad that they came to me, not because I have all the answers to everything under the sun. It's because as Mr. Foley said, I could either respond with what I know or get them to the right person on our team that can help them. And uh, so for example, just so that the board is aware and so that the public is aware, I've received some questions about extracurriculars and athletics at Walnut. That's something that Mr. Caliguire brought up earlier in this meeting. Uh, and the answer that I'm giving to everyone right now is uh, we only budgeted for drama club for Walnut. And this is something that was discussed for months as part of the budget process, the budget and finance committee, the full board, 
me, uh, Vicky LaSalle, and and it's it's a tough decision to not budget for those items. But at the same time, I didn't want to make a big announcement and say, well, we're not going to have extracurriculars except drama. What I wanted to do was wait and see what's happening with the funding. We have ARP funding that we still need to analyze and see what, what can we do with that money. We also have some, some possible community-based funding that could help us with the extracurriculars, uh, including athletics. So these are things that I am working on behind the scenes, which is why I wouldn't just make that announcement. But for the time being, the only budgeted item is Drama Club for Walnut. That does not mean that for the entire school year, that will be the only budgeted item. It's just a matter of us working on it. Uh, it's important for everybody to remember that this past year's budget uh, caused a rift, a reduction in force of multiple staff members. Uh, and so it's it, it was a very, very tough budget year. But again, we're receiving that funding. We need to look at how it can be used and see what we have. Mr. We have Steve Stephen Burns here now, uh, and I'm going to rely on him as a BA and, and what can we do? Can we shift things around into different accounts and make it work with that funding that we're receiving to see what we can do for extracurriculars? So I, I, I at least want to give, again, that glimmer of hope to everyone that even though certain things were not budgeted for, uh, that does not mean that's the end of that story. Uh, we're still working on that. Thank you. Okay, are there any other? public comments and non-agenda items. I don't see anybody else with their hand up. I've gone back and forth. So I will close that. And now um, it seems as though we do have a need to go into executive session regarding the discussion of the CSA evaluation for 2020-2021. So I'm thinking that um, at 8.31, the board, um, I will, we will go into executive session for approximately no more than an hour and I'm hopeful less and um, I need a motion to go into executive session. Motion. Thank Second. You. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Steen? Okay, the motion carries. We will now click the link for executive session. We'll leave this one, go into executive session and return within one hour, which will be approximately 9.30, if not sooner. Thank you so much. Okay, um, we had a member of the board leave during executive, so I don't know if he'll return for the regular meeting. My guess is he won't know when it started, but just to give you a heads up. Um, at this point in time, I'm requesting a motion to accept and approve the CSA evaluation as discussed in executive session and, and a motion to direct the board president to amend the current document. I make the motion. Thank you, Phil. I need a second. Second. Thank you. Um, questions and comments? Oh, we cannot comment on this, correct? Correct. Correct. So, it's just part of, I have to just say that. Oh, sorry. This is a re-evaluation, but we cannot comment. Oh, wait. Vera, I already gave the motion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Who's the second? I'm sorry, Mercy. Who's the second? Um, Robert Doby. I did, Cameron. Oh, you did? Oh, I thought that was Bob. Oh, sorry. sorry I, didn't, I don't know your voices yet. I'm sorry. All right. So I'm sorry. That was Cameron <laughs> Jenkins, and that's my fault. Cameron Jenkins. Okay. Would this have to be a roll call vote, Amy? Because it's regarding, yes. yes. Uh, we need a roll call vote, please. Yes. Mr. Calaguire. He's not present. Yeah. Ms. Darmo. I vote no. Mr. Doby. Mr. Doby. Bob. Can't hear you. Mute, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I vote yes. Thank you. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Karamanujian? Yes. Mr. Nitwack? You're on mute, Harry. You're on mute, Harry. Hmm. 
Yes. Thank you. Mr. McLaughlin? I'll go yes. Ms. Tersich Keeley? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion. <laughs> Every, everyone seconds it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, we'll go with uh, Mr. Doby for the motion and Cameron Jenkins for the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We adjourn the meeting. Thank you for your time, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.